Okay, okay, you just squared off against an ogre at a level low enough to result in you getting your whole arm crushed. What do you do? None of your friends have regenerate, and the clerics in the nearest city are really stingy and hike the prices. Easy answer. You go to that back alley artificer that you heard a drunken barfly rambling about last week and try your luck. Welcome to Table Technician Episode 7. This time we'll be going over prosthetics. Now, it's no mystery by this point that I love, capital L, love modularity in my games, so it should come as no surprise that this prosthetic system is completely modular. These three pillars we'll be going over are plug and play, allowing for quick balancing and on-the-fly tailoring should my ever stalwart wisdom fail you. Those familiar with my previous table technicians will feel quite at home with this new system, ideally. The three pillars in this video are appearance and flavor, benefits and abilities, and weaknesses. Let's do a quick breakdown of the pillars, and then you can get on your way making your own fancy fists and artificial actuating appendages. The first pillar is flavor. This is where you decide the type of prosthetic you have. The two most obvious types would be magical and mechanical, but you can make your own, easily. Hell, maybe your arm is a separate living entity. Magical prosthetics are definitely more lifelike, using intrinsic spell work and a tight arcane network to simulate a living limb. Well, they offer more powers, such as the ability to shoot fire or create a blinding flash, they're susceptible to anti magic fields and spells. Some powers can even be counterspelled, resulting in a temporarily disabled appendage. On the other hand, there are mechanical limbs, which trade out fine magical tuning for reliability. Mechanical powers might not be as flashy, but they get the job done. Think of magical as the scalpel and mechanical as the hammer. These limbs offer benefits to things like strength, speed, or damage at the expense of needing to be recharged or maintained, with fuel or specific care, respectively. I was kind of joking about living prosthetics earlier, but they can easily be the third type. In my mind, they would function like a mix of mechanical and magical, limbs with powerful abilities that need emotional care and food. The second pillar, abilities and benefits, is where the fun really begins. Once you've chosen a type of limb, you get to pick its benefit. These can be pretty much anything, but I like to break them up into defensive, offensive, and utility tiers. Defensive abilities include things like personal shields or fire-resistant radial fields generated by the limb. Offensive abilities could be things like built-in crossbows or the ability to emit poison clouds in a line. Utility abilities are things like a magical hand that can detach and move freely from you at your command, or an arm that contains vials of healing potions to be deployed at range. As with most of my mechanics, the rule is for every advantage you give yourself, give yourself a disadvantage. These disadvantages scale with the level of the power. For instance, say you take a prosthetic with the ability to lob a bright white ball of fire from it. This ball deals 1d8 damage to anyone it hits. This isn't a super crazy ability, so it wouldn't incur a super crazy debuff. Hell, maybe even the ability itself is the debuff. It takes an action to use, and you can only do it so many times per day. Works for me. Now, say you take the higher version of that ability. It deals 2d6 damage and explodes on impact, dealing extra damage to those around the target. The drawback this incurs is instability. Every time you use this ability, roll a d4. On a 1, the prosthetic lashes out with a burst of flame, dealing a flat amount of damage to you. There's also the possibility to simply take minor improvements with your appendage, either alone or alongside another larger ability. Stuff like stat increase or small speed or initiative buffs. Up to you and your DM. The third pillar is weaknesses, which, yeah, we just discussed, but there's a bit more to go over. Each weakness should directly correlate to the type of ability you have. For instance, if your prosthetic leg gives you the ability to jump higher or farther or run faster, the downside should be that after extended use or pushing this implement to an extreme, you suffer halved movement. It fits thematically and gives a good trade-off for the scale of power. As stated, your limb's weaknesses should be a fair match for their abilities, and if the abilities have drawbacks enough, you might not even need a weakness to begin with. If your ability's natural cooldown or power dice keep it from edging into the extraordinarily powerful territory, you could easily leave it as is. There is also the concept of latent weaknesses, which are simply byproducts of having a prosthetic at all. Perhaps your new leg can deliver a staggering blow thanks to its enhanced piston mechanism. However, you're still not used to it, as it doesn't quite feel like yours. You suffer an extra movement cost when moving through difficult terrain, and maybe even a cost off your total movement speed. Admittedly, adding hardcore debuffs like this is a little tricky and only for the most seasoned of homebrewers and players, but again, it's up to you and your DM. So, 
To sum it up, creating or purchasing a prosthetic begins with a type, mechanical or magical. Magical limbs are susceptible to anti-magic and counterspells and are more expensive, while mechanical limbs may be cheaper but require maintenance and or fuel. You then add on an ability of a defensive, offensive, or utilitarian nature. The more powerful the ability, the more expensive it is to add. If this ability gets beyond a certain power level, you add on a weakness or drawback. This drawback should be in direct correlation to the type of ability you have, not only in theme but in scale of power as well. Think of an equal push-pull relationship between the two. And that wraps up this episode. If this new mechanic sounded familiar to you, good. I think the triptych crafting method works well for D&D and can be applied to a lot of areas in the game. Moving on to the topic of Patreon, Golden Goose sold like hotcakes, and then the reality of what that meant set in on me. So it's going under some renovations immediately. I'll be splitting it into two different tiers. One, a more fixed pricey option, and the other, a more raffle oriented cheaper option. They'll be live after the end of March, most likely. So just like, I don't know, check my Twitter regularly if you're interested. That out of the way, I'd like to thank everyone currently pledged. As always, you're amazing. That's all for me. Bye-bye.